Hi, I'm Rusty Flake with Advanced Automotive Diagnostics. Um, I've been using ATS stuff for quite some time and it was brought to my attention that there really isn't any beginner scope connection and waveform acquisition information out there, video-wise anyway. Um, so I thought I would come in and go through a little bit of the beginner stages of, of setting up the scope, uh, connecting to uh, a vehicle and gathering some waveforms. I don't know how much waveform acquisition we'll actually do, but we can go through how you know that you have a connection and changing the amount of, of data you can capture and, and different things you can do with the scope. So you, you've got leads like any other scope. Uh, they do have uh, um, an exhaust signal amplifier for misfires. You got your pressure transducers, uh, leads, like pretty much anything else, BNC on one end, banana on the other. You can go uh, order special leads. Uh, AES Wave makes a lot of them. Uh, you can get BNC to BNC or, or whatever. I mean, that's all personal choice stuff. But uh, this scope in particular has eight channels. Uh, eight channels comes in handy quite often. Do you need it all the time? No. But uh, there's a lot of times it comes in very, very handy, especially on the more modern cars that you get. We have a little bit of a simulator board that we can uh, look at some signals here in a little while. Like any scope, you can use amp clamps, uh, low amp clamps, high amp clamps, trigger signals. Uh, you can use a breakout box and go to the DLC, look at your uh, networks and powers and grounds uh, on that circuit if you needed to also. So I think we can go into the scope and, and look at how you might know that you actually have a connection. So uh, on, on this scope, if you want to know that you actually have a connection, this little box is minus 3.5 bias volts. Also this channel indicator is red. So once we connect to a signal, if we don't have any power on and we go to connect, the red channel indicator goes gray, the bias voltage goes to zero or very close to zero. And then if we turn the system on and we're connect to a map sensor on the signal gener or the, the little board, we get a 5.0 signal on here. Um, and we're doing two different time bases. That's why they're, they're looking different like that. You can change them because the same time base, that's all over here. You can change the voltage levels on, on either one of the screens. If you don't want to see two different time bases, you can simply hit this button and shut off the bottom one. And it, it gives you a bigger screen. You can kind of do that. You can go to controls over here. We can hold either one of these channels or both of these channels. Um, you can hit hold A and B. We can then go to measure deep record if we want to. Plot A. And then we can manipulate that however we wanted to. Uh, we can hit the zoom window and zoom in on any part of it. And you can see your signal however much you want to. You can grab your cursors, and if you take this cursor and go to the side, you can make the image move. Um, so back to just the general acquisition. If, if you were to lose connection, that's going to turn red again. So if you're back probing and, and you slide out, or even if you're using the piercing probes, and say you barely got onto the wire and it's vibrating from the engine running or whatever and you lose the signal, you're gonna notice this go red so you, you'll know your signal didn't go bad, you just lost connection. It's super easy to get the connection though, I mean, you're really, and you can go to other screens, but you wanna make sure that the channel is not red and that your bias voltage drops. If you go to meters, it's still red, you still got the bias voltage easier to see because it's bigger and you, you know, when you connect, it goes to near zero, and the red goes away and you, you get gray. Then if the circuit comes live, you got a voltage reading and a, and a bar graph. You can use stack scope for like ignition signals and things of that nature. You can go to measure and deep record. You can hit start deep record. You can gather information that way also. Of course, you're not gonna be able to look at that live and tell anything. This is just if you're 
looking for a glitch or something and say it happens like, uh, let's see if we can make something happen here. And then you hit stop and you want to go in and look at it. Get your zoom window, which we have. You go in here, blow it up however you want to. Manipulate this thing. You can then go back and, and set it to full where you can get the pan hand. You can move it that way. You can look down here, or like I said, you can get the cursors and you can you can move it this way, or you can go up the other side. Sorry, get my hand in the way and move it the other way. It's pretty cool. A lot of things you can do with it. Okay, we're going to go back out of this uh, measure deep record screen. Let's go back into dual scope. Now, while you got this running, it's in strip chart mode right now. Uh, we're running at 40 milliseconds. That's a good speed to look at a lot of things. I mean, you can you can alter it, but that's a good one to start with, and then you can change it from there. Uh, if you were to change it, say, uh, if we want to go trigger, triggered scope, you can change your position on the screen uh, to where your, your signal you're looking at is going to be, or you can change what channel you're, you're triggering on. If you're on more than one channel, you can change the level, which would be your voltage here. Um, so whatever signal you're looking at, say uh, it's a five volt signal like this, you might want to put it in the middle at like two and a half volts. And you can change the slope, whether it's rising edge, falling edge here. Say you're using a copy, you'd select that here, and then you want to zero it down here, and you would get that. We're not going to get that on, on this particular uh, sensor naturally, but that's how you would do that to get to get a ignition signal with an ECOP. Um, you can select a lot of things. I mean, your pressure transducers, your amp clamps. Say if you wanted to use uh, this little 60 amp clamp, um, up to 60, you would probably want to go to the 20 amp scale and use that and then zero first the clamp itself and then zero the scope if you were, were doing that. That way it's, it's all zeroed there. Uh, you can change a trigger on either channel, both channels. You can have one strip chart running, one on triggered. You can can change all the settings on there. So if we wanted to, to move this over to the middle, we can change our position and get it to where it's wherever we want it on the screen, just like any other scope. But these are the controls for that. I mean, you can change your time setting. Um, I generally have mine at 40 milliseconds you, you know it depends on what you're looking at you change it to do what you want it to do but at least now you know you can get the signal you can capture it um, a lot of times I just use a dual scope I use a deep record on some stuff like I say if I've got a glitch that only comes every once in a while I use uh, deep record if I'm going on a test drive I generally go deep record and just record it that way if I'm in shop and it's it's something I can get to act up regular, a lot, uh, most of the time I just go with my dual scope and go that way. Pretty interesting scope. It's got a lot of capability. You can do do a lot of things with it. Uh, pretty portable here. Grab it, put it in the car. Get a, uh, a, a power source probably. If you're running the scope for very long on a, on a test drive, you don't want a power source to keep the scope up. Um, Otherwise, it's going to eat the battery pretty quickly. That's really about all there is to capturing a signal. It's it's pretty easy. Um, the, this, they're constantly updating the capabilities of the scope uh, and the scan tool, for that matter. But on the scope, they're constantly updating uh, what 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 it can do, uh, frequency and and. The pin, uh, I, don't, I don't think I showed, I don't know if this one's set up for it, but if you click the pin, it stops. Uh, they have it now where if you're throwing a code and you want to have a scanner and the scope hooked up to it, you're going down the road when it throws the code, it'll stop the scope so you can go back and analyze so you, you can really be by yourself driving and be fairly safe um, that way because you don't have to be looking at the scope and, and trying to shut it down. When, when your glitch happens or whatever. If it's coding for it, it'll shut it down. If not, you click the pin, 
it'll do it. You can click it twice and mark it. I think it's click it twice. You can mark when it happened and you go back and there'll be a blue uh, blue line on it. And then when you go back, yeah, or a purple line, I'm sorry. You go there, that's where you clicked it. That's where the glitch happened. Um, <clears throat> there's always a little bit of time delay by the time it happens and you actually click the stop button. But at least that'll get you close to the area so you can go back and, and look, um, you know, pan hand, whatever you want to do. You don't have to use the pen, but you could do that, or you could use the cursors and scroll through it that way. While we were talking about uh, trigger setting and stuff, um, some of the signals you'll want to look at on a rising slope, which is here, uh, is where you change your slope setting. Some things you'll want to look at on the falling slope, and you can, you can touch the box, change it that way, and it just shifts the pattern this way. Um, or you can hit these up and down arrows either way and change the rising and falling slopes. So, you know, depending on the signal that you're looking at, you may need to change that slope and uh, you know, keep, keep the voltage level usually about halfway of the part of the signal that you're wanting to look at. So if you were looking at a fuel injector and you're going from B plus to ground and, uh, and then back up, if you were looking at the falling edge, um, you know, it, it depends on, on the voltage of that particular signal, but you, you generally want to be about halfway, and you can vary it from there to see what you want to see. Um, this scope, I mean, even if you capture on this, like I said, you can go put it on deep record. You can zoom in on any part of it you want to anyway, really. So it's, it's pretty easy going that way. Now we have some tabs up here. You got your controls. You could go in. Uh, we were at this part briefly earlier. You can hold things. Uh, the one channel, both channels, either one of the channels. You can save um, or the waveform, save channel A, you can save B. Uh, once you save it, say if we wanted to save this, you're going to put in your information here. And, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of it's pretty well loaded with different things that, that you can pre select. Uh, if it's not in there, you can always go over here and here and type in what you want to. Go down and get the keyboard, depends on what computer you're using. But um, you can type in, if it wasn't in the drop down here, what you're connected to, what you're looking at. You can put in here any kind of description, what the, what the vehicle's doing or the circuit's doing or whatever. And uh, load that in there. And then you save it. And then you could turn around, pull it up later, and look at it uh, anytime you wanted to. Multi-tool, that'd, that'd be if you were wanting to use the scope and the scan tool, like we were mentioning earlier uh, on a test drive, and uh, code's going to set. If you wanted to have the, the data over here for the scan tool, that would be a possibility. Um, or any of the other tools, you, you can use multi-tools. Uh, any, any of the ATS tools. Uh, CKP, that's part of the misfire stuff. Elite scope, that's just startup screen. You can go into demo mode if you want to just play around from there. Uh, go into demo mode and then you can go into files that, that maybe are stored in it. Go into load, pick a file, any file, whatever. And, and then load the data and it'll put it up there and you can go in and look at that stuff, manipulate it however you want to. It's just stuff that's in their demo file. Um, to get out of it, you just go back and turn it back off. Dual scope, we were on that. Stack scope, uh, usually that's ignition waveforms or, or multiple signals, any of the signals you can change. Uh, and go to this and, and look at that, whether it's like a uh, fuel trims, short term, long term, engine temp, RPM, whatever you, you can, you know, go in, whatever you're back probing into your O2 sensors or, or whatever. I guess the trims, that, that is not correct. Um, that's more scan tool stuff, but you can, whatever, whatever channel you're hooked up, you can look at them on, on this platform also. Measure deep record, we spent some time there. Meters. 
Um, you can watch the voltage and get it on, on a bar graph kind of thing there, manipulate uh, to a degree and reset it and it'll start all over again. Outputs, outputs is kind of cool. You can go in, you can do a, uh, if you want to control a fuel injector, you can go into this area and do that. We'd have to get a little bit deeper into that. And you can tell if you got a signal being pulled down by a short or something, because, uh, and, and that's stuff for a more in-depth video later, but that's where you would go to do that, to control injectors or, or, or put a, uh, a bias voltage on a circuit to see if you have a shorted wire or something like that. You, you can do it there. Uh, tools, that's pretty neat stuff. If you get the uh, misfire program or anything, you go into here, you can do, do uh, that kind of stuff here. But uh, that's, that's more in depth than what we're wanting to do today. Phenomenal other stuff. Oh, always updating. And uh, if you ever have any questions, you can call. There's many people on uh, different Facebook forums that can help you out. Um, call ATS. They're very good about answering the phone. And uh, somebody will, will help you. If, uh, if Jeff himself can't do it, he'll, he'll get somebody to help you. Uh, very good customer support. Any questions, you can generally get a hold of me. Again, I'm Rusty Flake, Advanced Automotive Diagnostics. You can go to my page or shop page if you have any questions or call me if you got the number. Again, I'm Rusty Flake, Advanced Automotive Diagnostics. Take care.